What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Sports Scoop. Today, I'm going to be doing my overall draft grades for the NFL draft this season. So before we get into the video, if you enjoy, make sure to like and subscribe. We do NFL content almost daily. So if you want to get the latest NFL news, updates, or and or opinions, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. That way, let's get into the video. So starting off with the draft grades, we are going to be going division by division. Starting off with the AFC East, you have the New York Jets, and I'm giving them a B plus. And I think when you look at the Jets, I thought they had a very, very solid draft. I think obviously you see the, the headliners are the Zach Wilson pick, but I think well, I always say with a with a draft, with a, a rookie quarterback, you always want to build from the inside out and start off with the offensive line, the basic principles, the building blocks. And I think that's what they did here. They obviously they traded up. It cost a lot, two third round picks this season and got Elijah Barrett Tucker, which obviously hurt. And I thought they got second round. They got him also weapons with Elijah Moore. So I thought it was a very solid draft. And I think the only reason why they don't get higher is just because of the fact that maybe they, again, the trade up cost a lot and they weren't maybe able to fill as many positions as they need. But as you can see by the, the um, bullet points, they actually still got a lot of picks in there and were able to fill a lot of needs. And I think Zach Wilson is going to be in a much better situation than Sam Darnold. I think the Jets really improved their team, which makes it a B plus for me. Now going on to the Miami Dolphins again, B plus, this is going to be a, a trend. I think this is really the case with a lot of NFL teams where they had very, very decent drafts, but there are things to nitpick about them. The Dolphins, as you can see, didn't have as many picks. But I think with the picks that they used, they made the most out of them. Obviously, the sixth pick, they selected Jalen Waddell. Dylan wasn't a big fan of that. I think it's not a terrible pick, in my opinion. I thought it was a decent pick, and I think it really, with all the weapons they're building around with the draft and in uh, in free agency, it really gives to a, a much better situation in next year to maybe make that second-year leap and maybe have has a lot less excuses considering he has a lot of help on the offensive side of the ball. Defensive side of the ball, they also did great. They got, in my opinion, the number one edge rusher in this class and Jalen Phillips and one of the best safeties in the class and Javon Holland, one of the best cover safeties, got an offensive tackle in Liam Eichenberg that is a day one plug and play, which will maybe move Robert Hunt to guard. So I think it was, in my opinion, a very, again, a very solid draft. Again, I wish maybe they could have, um, again, maybe Waddle wasn't the right pick there. You could have gone Devontae Smith. Maybe you could have got taken uh, Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa also there. So they're um, at in the second round, but I still thought it was a very, very solid draft the Miami Dolphins going on to the new England Patriots third straight B plus I know. And I mean, more of the same. I thought it was a very, very solid draft with um, things that obviously they could have maybe done better, but I thought that overall they did a great job doing uh, going to improve the team. Mac Jones, obviously, you know, at these words scoop, we aren't the biggest fans of him, but I think at 15, it was appropriate value compared to what the rest of the league had him at, considering that everyone's saying, oh, who's going to trade up for Mac Jones? Obviously, he's much higher value than the league than by analysts. So, But I think the fact that the Patriots didn't trade up, they just hold, held at 16, saw how the board really played out. And I think, let's be honest, if Mac Jones is going to succeed anywhere, I think it will be in New England. Christian Barmore um, and uh, Ronnie Perkins, I think there are great additions to the defensive line trying to rebuild that position, which I think – Bill Belichick would love to have another very good pass rush. And again, in my opinion, one of the steals of the draft with Cameron McGrone in the fifth round. I think he um, obviously didn't get to play a lot last um, this past year, but I think the year before he really showed on tape that he was maybe one of the better, one of the more underrated, one of the better linebackers, in my opinion, in this class. And to get him in the fifth round is an absolute steal. Not saying he's a plug and play guy, but I feel like he could be, um, a very you could start maybe this season at some point don't be surprised if Belichick maybe starts a bit earlier than people expect so I love the Patriot draft here going on to the Bills not a B plus this one B minus I think and B minus isn't bad I think it just man I think the back-to-back uh, -back edge picks aren't bad considering they did have a need I don't love who they took I think Rousseau is decent but by his pro day you saw that he might have lost a bit of like um I don't know burst he doesn't have that same burst as players like Ojolari or um obviously Jalen Phillips and Basham I like Basham also but when you go edge in the first in the first round it's also um interesting when you go with the same position in the first two rounds especially considering when it's a position like edge I like the pick of Spencer Brown at tackle to help protect Josh Allen and again, they did a good job stockpiling picks and getting good picks. I think it was 
and eh, draft it was I I don't think they improved enough team their team enough to maybe make head waves and I think maybe contend with teams like get close the gap between teams like them and the Chiefs. But I thought it was a not bad draft for me. Now you have the Cincinnati Bengals C plus here, so that was a not great but not terrible draft. I think obviously Jamar Chase. You I I don't hate hate the pick, but obviously when Joe Burrow tears his ACL, you have to understand that. Tackle is a need. And as you can see by the list, they did address in the second round with Jackson Carmen and later in the fourth round with Deontay Smith. But like the gap, obviously, I know that this is a very deep tackle class, but the gap between those guys and Penny Sewell is very, very big. And maybe they could have dressed guard a bit more. Maybe they could have gone Creed Humphrey or Landon Dickerson, maybe. Uh I, I don't I don't necessarily love this draft. I don't know why they addressed edge three times not consider i know they lost carl lawson but i feel like maybe address offensive side of the ball especially the uh offensive line maybe could have been addressed a bit more especially considering maybe the more lack of consideration for that position in free agency steelers c here and honestly to be honest i think the re- only reason why they get c is this the high street gets uh, the players that they took in the first two rounds with Najee Harris and Pat Fryermuth because I think they're very good players overall but my problem with what the Steelers is they just didn't address the key positions enough I think they did I know they addressed um offensive line the later picks with Kendrick Green and Dan Moore but those guys I could see Kendrick Green I like him I think he could be a starter eventually but I feel like they it needed to be addressed much much earlier especially considering how we we already seen Pouncey retire Villanueva we don't know if he will be back that offensive line is going to be a complete overhaul. And I feel like they should have addressed it a lot earlier. Even if I do like players like Najee Harris and Pat Fryermuth, another position that I feel like they really should have addressed was cornerback. And they didn't address that till the seventh round with Trey Norwood. And with all due respect to Trey Norwood, he isn't going to be even close to the immediate starter. Who knows if he even starts at all. I is considering, especially considering, I, I don't know. I don't remember the name of the corner. But I think one of their corners also got arrested recently considering the fact that you lost Steven Nelson and Mike Hilton. They just didn't do a good enough, um, do a well enough job of addressing positions of need. So for that reason, C for them. Now we have the Browns a for them. They, I think they had an absolute home run of a draft. Greg Newsom in the first round was a great pick. I think 26 is appropriate value for him. He uh, will pair up with players like um, Denzel Ward and Greedy Williams, who was their, um, was um, an earlier pick last year for the Browns, but did have to lose um, one after the season. You can, what you can see with these first two round picks and with Jeremiah Wusu Cormo in the second is that they're completely overhauling that defense both in free agency and the draft. And I feel like the Browns, if you really look at them on paper, they've went from one of the better offense in the NFL to maybe one of the more well-rounded teams in the NFL Again, Owusu Koromoa, we we really didn't know why he flipped to the second round until recently. Uh, we heard that there was a heart condition that he was diagnosed with, like before the draft, that maybe caused him to fall. However, the doctors have cleared him, so we, in my opinion, that's why they do get an A in this draft. I like players like Anthony Schwartz and James Hudson to get some more depth, and Tommy Tagai is also a good piece to surround on that defensive line with Clowney and Garrett. So I think A for the Browns here. Now you have the Ravens not far behind a minus. I think they, again, did some a similarly good job of dressing needs. Rashad Bateman, in my opinion, great value at 27. Keen will tell you all about him. Great route running, good hands, plays bigger than he really actually is. 31, Jason Oa, a developmental edge, but I think he could be great if he is developed in the right way. And with the Ravens, with one of the better coaching staffs in the NFL, I don't doubt that he can. I like Ben Cleveland the third. Make sure that you protect Lamar Jackson. Didn't have nearly as good protection that that sorry didn't have nearly as good protection this year as he did last year so addressing the guard position is important maybe could have addressed tackle as well i like tylen wallace also in the fourth i think that's a steal i get a very good draft for the ravens i thought it was a very very solid draft i love bateman i love uh oh it was a decent pick but i love the bateman pick and i think it's a it's a well-deserved grade for the ravens and another smash smash out of the park for the Ravens GM, um, Eric DaCosta. It's just, they always seem to get the biggest deals. Going on to the Jaguars B, and obviously, really, you can't give lower than a B when you have when you draft possibly the greatest quarterback ever to come out of college in Trevor Lawrence. But I wasn't really a huge fan of the rest of their draft. Travis Etienne at 25, I don't know. I'm, when you have so many holes on offense, I feel like 
it's not a smart decision to go for a running back, especially when you already have undrafted, um, on, on, albeit undrafted, but an absolute star in James Robinson. Tyson Campbell, I'm fine with the pick, but again, you also drafted C.J. Henderson last year. Maybe go for, um, I don't know, maybe a wide receiver there or a linebacker. Walker Little, decent tackle. I'll give you that, but is coming off a torn ACL. I like Cisco. I like Tufele, but wasn't a great draft for the Jaguars, but of course you still get Trevor Lawrence. So I think it was, I think B is well-deserved. Now you have the Colts C plus for them. I like Quiddy Pay. I thought their first round pick was very good. Quiddy Pay is a beast and I think they need to reinforce the edge rusher. Again, another team that goes two edges in the first two rounds. I don't know about why well, I don't know about taking Dio Odiungbo in the first two rounds, not because of his talent, but because he is coming off of a torn ACL and I know he's young, but there's so much uncertainty that I feel like there were a lot of other edges that could have maybe possibly been worth taking ahead of him. Like, I don't know, maybe a, um, a Carlos Basha more uh, who was on the board at the time, but I think there were still a decent amount of good or a Patrick Jones. So I think there were still a decent amount of good edges on the board at the time. And I feel like uh, Odi Yingbo was a bit of a reach. Also, I have a problem that they really didn't address tackle a lot in the draft, especially considering Anthony Costanzo did retire Carson Wentz is coming from a situation in Philly where he clearly wasn't well protected. So I think they need to change that. And I feel like they could have addressed the tackle a bit more. Now you have the Tennessee Titans B plus for them. I think they really improved on, uh, especially on the defensive side of the ball where they really struggled last season. I, I love the Caleb Farley pick. I know that there are back concerns, but there seems to be much less of a question mark now than there was before. Dylan Radunes is a decent pick. Obviously, the Isaiah Wilson pick last year didn't go as planned. Monty Rice is a very underrated shout at le- at linebacker. I know they did lose players like Vic Beasley. They do uh, they did not pick Rashawn Evans' fifth year option up, so I think that's a decent pick. Elijah Molden again addressed sec- um, secondary. I think the Titans did a very decent job of addressing that area of the field, and for that, I think they get a B plus. They're not outstanding picks, but they were all very efficient and well placed. Texans D plus. I mean, I like Nico Collins and Brevin Jordan, but the problem is when you have so few picks, you're not going to get a good grade. That's usually my policy. And the fact that they had to take Davis Mills isn't really a good sign with the Deshaun Watts situation. Obviously I'm not going to go through all that. It's such a long story and there's so many um, complications with that, but I feel like Texans with a team that's so screwed, like the Texans, you need so much more picks. And I think they don't have that at the moment. So I think D plus there. Broncos B plus. I like Patrick Sertan. Don't me don't get me wrong, but I feel like when you have already three cornerbacks, um, like Ronald Darby, they signed Ronald Darby, Kyle Fuller, and Bryce Callahan, that are all, in my opinion, very competent, very decent cornerbacks. You could go for other needs, like maybe trading down or getting a linebacker, or even maybe getting Justin Fields. So I didn't think it was the best pick, even though it is good value. Don't get me wrong. I like the Javante Williams pick at 35, even if you do have Melvin Gordon and Philip Lindsay. I think Quinn's Myers is also a good pick uh, at guard. Baron Browning as well. I think they did. They got very good value. I love the Jamar Johnson pick in the fifth round to kind of, I wouldn't be surprised if like in a year or two, maybe he pairs with Justin Simmons in that secondary, considering he was franchise tagged this year. So I, I really, I do, I did like the Broncos draft overall. First round pick wasn't great, but I think the rest of it, they did very, very well. I have the Chargers A minus there. I think, honestly, I, I love the Slater pick. Obviously, again, same thing. You have to protect your young quarterback. That is priority number one. I think that's what the Chargers did. They get a steal in Slater. Second round as well, Asante Samuel Jr., uh, some people have pegged him as a first round pick or maybe early second. I think that 47 is a great value for them. Obviously you need to address that aging and a lot of people leaving secondary. So I think that was good. Rest of the draft is fine. I like Josh Palmer out of Tennessee. And I think uh, Nick Niamon is also is a very decent player from Iowa, but I think obviously it was uh, the rest of the draft was okay. But I think because of those first two picks, I think it makes it worth it for a minus. Raiders, I mean, you're not surprised here. This is what it always is. C minus. The Raiders always do the most confusing things in the draft. And I don't know why. It honestly could have been lower now that I think about it. And it's not even the Alex Leatherwood pick that I have a problem with. I mean, I do have a problem with, but that's not even the base issue. Why the hell are you drafting three safeties in a single draft? I mean, and don't be wrong, like all of them are good. I like Trayvon Mo. I actually love Trayvon Morig. 
Davin Diablo, he's fast. He's a solid player. I love Tyree Gillespie in the fourth, but why are you taking three safeties when you have so many other needs on the defensive side of the ball? They could have addressed interior defensive line. They could have addressed edge, could have addressed linebacker a bit more, but I don't know why they go for three safeties. That That's why, in my opinion, they get a C minus. It's just always puzzling with Mayock and Gruden. Chiefs, you have an A minus here. I And I think, again, it was just another home run of a draft. I think Nick Bolton at, 50, at 58 to address the linebacker court can be step in and be a leader on that defense. Creed Humphrey, I don't know how the hell the Chiefs have just totally rebuilt their offensive line in – in one real and one off season. And also not only that Trey Smith in the sixth round is an absolute steal. I, he uh, performed very well at the senior bowl and I don't know how he fell to the sixth round. The rest of the picks were decent. I like Cornell Powell from Clemson, but they don't really matter to the chiefs. I don't know how well they've just rebuilt their offensive line in one off season, which is just incredible. They've done an amazing job trading picks um, getting assets of free agency, even with limited cap room, and now um, exploiting a lot of falls in the draft. So I think it was a very, very good draft for the Chiefs. B plus for the Eagles. I, I think, don't get me wrong, I love the Devontae Smith pick, and I'm not going to like slate it at all. It's just that the reason why I only gets a B plus, even though a lot of people love the Eagles draft, just because it was more extended. Like if you trade up and don't take Devontae Smith, questions are going to be asked. So I think it's a decent pick there. Landon Dickerson, I like it as well, trying to rebuild that offensive line to what it once was. Obviously, struggled uh, recently. Milton Williams, maybe a bit overvalued. Um, obviously, this interior defensive line class isn't very strong from the beginning, but I I think it's okay. And the rest of the picks, I like Kenneth Gainwell from Memphis. He's decent. I like Teron Jackson from Coastal Carolina. I like that they're addressing edge. And I think B+, plus, I thought it was a good draft for the Eagles, but it wasn't incredible. Cowboys B and really it's it's so hard to have a good draft when you get royally screwed like the Cowboys did I mean they had two targets on the board that they were almost uh, sorry almost sure that they were going to get with JC that JC Horn and they had Patrick Sertan and when the Panthers took them like okay I mean maybe did not everyone expected that but at least the Broncos I, I doubt they take a cornerback considering they had so many needs but then they do take Patrick Sertan and now all of a sudden they're in a pickle I think they handled it pretty well. They traded back. They get a player like Michael Parsons. Solid pick for me. Kelvin Joseph in the second. I think he'll be a very solid slot um, corner. Osa Idigazua will be very good in stuffing the run. Jabril Cox in the fourth, in my opinion, is a steal as well. I think it was a uh, it was a very solid draft again for the Cowboys. I think it wasn't incredible. I think they it wasn't as flashy as last year with selecting CD Lamb, but I think it was efficient. It was efficient. They, they tried to fill a position to the need to the best of the ability and really kind of took what the draft gave them. And obviously that's not the easiest thing to do, but I think it was a solid draft for the Cowboys. Washington football team B as well. Again, uh, I already was fine with the J- John Davis pick at 19, but now considering why Usu Cormo was slipped, I like it a bit more. I, I love the Samuel Cosby pick at 51 event, trying to fill the um, big replacement of um, Trent Williams, who was formerly there. Benjamin St. Juice, um, underrated cornerback prospect. Again, maybe a bit overvalued in round three, but I like that they're trying to address the cornerback position. Diami Brown, again, they're trying to give Ryan Fitzpatrick or who knows, maybe even Taylor Heineke weapons in on the offensive side of the ball. I think, again, when you look at this, it's a very, very solid draft for Washington. They uh, were efficient in filling positions of need and, I think that's really all I have to say. It's a decent, decent draft. Going on to the New York Giants, B minus here, which is basically meh. I know I don't really like the Canaries Tony pick just because of the fact that you have, in my opinion, better wide receivers like Elijah Moore, Terrace Marshall, Rashad Bateman that are available. Even if I don't think ter- Tony's a terrible receiver, I think it's a bit overvalued, especially when you have players like I know Owusu Kormo was with dealing with heart condition, but considering that he was clear, that still could have been the pick. Could have been Quiddy Pay as well. Could have been another a different wide receiver. Could have been Marshall or Bateman. I like Ojalari in the second. Aaron Robinson, another pick that I feel like, again, maybe a bit overvalued. I like Ellerson Smith as an edge in the fourth round. I know he's listed as linebacker. It wasn't a terrible draft for the Giants, but I don't think it was anything to write home about. 
Lions A minus. In my opinion, the whole NFC North absolutely smacked this draft out of the park. I think I love the Penny Sewell pick here. Levi Owens Rukia will also do a great job stuffing the sorry, stuffing the run. If Ayatu Melifanwu in the third is great as well, helping them in the secondary. Monra St. Brown in the fourth is again a great pick to help kind of bolster that weak receiving core. I know Detroit aren't a great team. I like Derek Barnes as well, but I think I know Detroit aren't a great team, but they did a great job trying their best to address as many needs as possible for a team that is so bereft of talent. And the one thing that maybe can um, maybe be a bit upset about is that maybe they didn't address their wide receiver concerns a bit earlier, or maybe enough, considering that that wide receiver core is so weak, especially with Galladay and Marvin Jones leaving. But I still think overall they 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 took a lot of times they took the BPA, which is which makes sense for a team that has so many needs on both sides of the football. And for that reason, I think they deserve an A minus. Bears again, A minus. They did give up a hefty price to get Justin Fields, but in the end, for me, it was all worth it considering, for me, finally, they actually might have a franchise quarterback. And the second round, they also get Tevin Jenkins from Oklahoma State, uh, Oklahoma State again, capitalizing on key position falls. And for that, automatically, uh, key positions falling. And that for that, automatically, you get, you get, in my opinion, at least in the A tier of grades. Borom in the fifth is a decent pick. Again, addressing that tackle position, trying to rebuild that offensive line. Daz Newsom, I like him. I think he could have gone a lot earlier than the sixth round. I think it was a very good draft for the Bears, who, in my opinion, aren't. I mean, not that not that far away from. They are far away from Super Bowl, but they're really they're doing a decent job rebuilding that offense, especially considering that defense still is very good. Vikings, in my opinion, they had the best drafts of them all. I think I, I I almost gave them an A plus, but I think A is fair. I think they them obviously the whole NFC North, but I think especially them. I think they had the best draft here. I mean, first of all, trading back with the Jets to get and still get the guy that you could have gotten at fourteen and probably would have wanted at fourteen and Christian Darius already a great pick, taking Kellen Mond in third, which is a great value in my opinion for a guy that is a very promising quarterback prospect. And I think could maybe push Kirk Cousins for a job if he does start struggling. And obviously, Kirk Cousins' job isn't exactly completely safe. Chasterot also, I really like his value in the third round, later third round picks. Wyatt Davis, a late again, another later third round pick that will help address the offensive line, which has really struggled for years. He will help um, Dalvin Cook in the running game. Patrick Jones in the third as well. Really, really, really high upside with this guy. Great speed and elite bend. The rest of the draft, I love Jamarius Robinson. I like Amir Smith Marset from Iowa. I think really there aren't really any, nothing that they, you could critique. They took BPA and they also got value that they really needed. And for that reason, I think they had the best draft of all the teams this year. Two years in a row, really, honestly. Packers B plus. Obviously, it was hard as a Packers fan to follow the draft considering the Aaron Rodgers saga that was going on at the same time. But when you look at them, I think they had a solid draft. Obviously, Eric Stokes, it's a decent pick. They needed corner, but I feel like maybe there were some better ones available. Josh Myers from Ohio State is, I don't know if he was the best center available at the time, but I feel like still it's very important to draft a replacement for Corey Lindsley. Amari Rodgers in the third was, I, I had him. If you watch our underrated players list, I had him as my underrated player. He's He's a he. Um, he has a huge physique. He's like a. He's built like a running back. Obviously, a bit a small, but like, he's very very physical. He's a very good slot receiver. A lot of people compare him to Randall Cobb. I think he'll be a beast. Uh, a beast of a weapon there. The rest of the draft, it's solid. I don't. I don't hate it or love it, but I think it was a solid draft overall, in my opinion. I think it deserves a B plus. Now going on to the Atlanta Falcons, C plus here. It's a similar thing with the Trevor Lawrence situation where you draft one of the best players available. We can't really give too, too bad of a grade. And that's why I think with the Kyle Pitts, but I wasn't really a fan, sorry, of the rest of the Falcons draft. I mean, for first, first of all, taking Richie Grant over Trayvon Rorick, I'm sorry, but that's inexcusable. Jalen Mayfield, the third, that's solid. I understand that. But the rest of the draft, you look at that and think, I, it's decent, but I, I feel like they didn't address positions like edge well enough. I know they got, sorry if I mispronounce this, Atatun, Atato Kunbo Ojun Deji. Sorry if I mispronounce that. I'm really, really sorry. But 
they could have really addressed it a lot more than they actually did. And for that reason, I think they get a C plus. Panthers B plus for them. I really, I really like the B. I, I think actually a lot of people are really hating on the pack, uh, Panthers strap, but I thought I really liked it. I think JC Horn at eight is a very good pick. One of the most physical corners in this draft has very polished hand technique has got decent speed. I think, so yeah, I think he has a potential to be one of the best corners in the NFL in the next couple of years. Terrace Marshall at 59 is an absolute steal. Could have gone easily late first or early second. Brady Christensen in third. Obviously, he protected well for Zach Wilson at BYU. Chubba Hubbard in the fourth. Also, I love that pick. Davion Nixon in the fifth. The Panthers really did a great job of addressing needs while getting, again, BPA, which I keep on obsessing over and over. I think it was a very, very solid draft for Carolina. I don't understand why people don't like it. I think, obviously, I mean, obviously, maybe they could have gone a different position at uh, round one or uh, early round one, especially with Slater and Darius on the board. But I think, I think it was a very, very good draft for Carolina, in my opinion. Saints, C, and again, it's another one of those situations where when you don't have a lot of picks, I can't give you a super high grade. Don't get me wrong. I like Peyton Turner Pete and Pete Werner. I think a bit maybe a bit overvalued but i think i like the paulson to debo pick ian book way overreached i don't know why you take someone like him in the fourth round when you have other positions of need still especially with the salary cap crunch i don't know i think it was a c grade because they had a couple of okay picks but i think i don't know i think it wasn't anything special i think it was a bit below average for me bucks b minus meh I mean, when you're Super Bowl champions, you really don't have much to improve on there, especially with the team that retained all of its starters. I like Joe Tryon. I think he'll be a rotational guy in that Super Bowl lineup. Kyle Trask as well. I mean, no, what? He won't be a rotational guy. I think he's a one for the future, potentially be a quarterback for the future of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I think he's put in the perfect situation. He gets uh, learned behind the greatest quarterback of all time for about 10 years. But uh, I think, honestly, the rest of the draft doesn't seem to matter because I don't think any of them will really start, especially considering, again, they're retaining all of their starters. 49ers, we're getting towards the end. B, I like, I'm very, again, I'm very, very happy they didn't take Mac Jones. I like Trey Lance at three, has a huge arm. These um, underrated intelligence um, obviously isn't, uh, concerns our accuracy in the mid mid tier of, um, sorry, not the mid the mid game, like, uh, mid range passing isn't elite. Um, obviously has to work on that, but that's why I think Jimmy G's still there. Why he might still be the quarterback, um, at least starting this year to give Trey Lance maybe potential to learn under him and then maybe take over year two. I think he'll be ready decently, fairly earlier. Again, he's a smart quarterback. Obviously they have to work on tech, uh, throwing motion technique, that kind of stuff. And I think it is not that hard coachable i uh, not that hard to coach trey sermon in the third as well i really like that pick i think um could really benefit from that zone run uh zone blocking scheme that they have in at san francisco similar to what they had at ohio state and i think again solid pick in the third round for um for the 49ers i think that will kind of again open up that running game that maybe they're trying to get back to from 2019 when they made that super bowl run Cardinals, I have to give them a B minus here. Sorry, and my face cam is covering a bit of that. Hopefully, you can look past that. David Collins, it's a mad pick, but I think they I like that they're how they're trying to reinvigorate that linebacking core. Rondell Moore, I love that guy. I think he'll be a great gadget weapon for the um for the Cardinals, especially considering they're trying to make a push, like maybe to get closer and closer to maybe being contenders. Who knows? Maybe they are this year. The rest of the draft, I like Marco Wilson from Florida. Um, take take a one from um, UCF might be used a steal in the sixth round. I think it was a, I think it was a, again, yeah, it's not so bad draft for the Cardinals, but it's man again, considering the fact that I know they're not the Bucks, but they still have a lot of, a lot of talent. So I think it was a decent draft though. Uh, and now you get to the Seattle Seahawks. They are my worst grade. And honestly, again, I keep saying this, but like, when you have so few picks, they had three total picks. I can't give you a high grade. And the fact that they only address offensive line one, so unfortunate that I like him. He's actually a steal in the sixth round. But when you have so few picks and 
you need to address a lot, in my opinion, too. Maybe get to that Super Bowl level that maybe Russell Wilson wants to get back to. When you only have three picks, you can't get a high grade. The only reason why they don't get an F is, again, because at least they addressed offensive line once, and it was a good pick, but D- minus for them. And with the final pick, you have the L.A. Rams, and I they have a lot more picks. Um, I like the 2-2 at 12 pick. Obviously, add add that to another a lot. Uh, add that versatile weapon to um, a decent receiving core with Robert uh, Robert Woods and uh, Josh Reynolds and Von Jefferson. So I think it's a decent pick. I like Ernest Jones from South Carolina. Bobby Brown is a very good pick in the fourth round as well. I think the Rams. Uh, also, I like how they address. They didn't really. I mean, they. I like how they address linebacker decently. And also defensive line to kind of get those rotational guy, guys on that defense to kind of maybe maintain that elite defense they had last season. It was, again, I, I keep saying this, but when you have those stacked teams in the NFC, there's not really a lot to draft when you have so much talent across the board. So for that reason, it was a solid draft, but B minus. So like, meh, that, that's what, that's what I have. But anyway, that is it for the video. Again, if you enjoy, make sure to like and subscribe. Obviously, this is an opinion video, so I will not, uh, not everyone will agree with me. So comment down below what you think of the video. What would you have done differently? What do you think of the draft? Who, what were your favorite picks? Tell me all that in the comments below. Again, make sure to like and subscribe, turn on notifications. We post almost daily. So if you, again, enjoy day, almost daily NFL content, we again post update videos, um, reaction, opinion videos, post all that sort uh, sort of stuff. So again, if you enjoy NFL content, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.